Oh, did you guys meet? Wallace, Hi. this is my cousin Chantry. Thank you for being so gracious in victory. I'm gonna give you my number. We should hang out. Yeah. My boyfriend will be worried about um, what happened to me. So, friends? Yeah, why not? Okay. Friends. Is this always how you make friends? Like it's a business deal? Yeah, actually, mm. it's just my style. Okay, it's quite unnerving, but it's good. <laughs> Dan, let's chat. Okay. Um, all right, you know, obviously this raises the question, can men and women really be friends, right. blah, blah, blah. It's a, you know. <laughs> That's how I feel about that question now, by the way. Just like, so you oh, perfectly know. expressed it, blah, blah, blah. Because you've <laughs> never been asked that question before. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yes, I have been. Um, it's been, it's interesting that that has been what has be, uh, been picked up on about this film. And I think this film's timing, along with the sort of arrival into modern uh, language of the word friend zone, is sort of at cross purposes with one another. Because this film is about, you know, friend zone, as, as I understand it, is when you really fancy somebody and they don't fancy you at all and they just want to keep you in the friend zone. Whereas in this movie, these two people do fancy each other and they want to be together, but one of them has a boyfriend, uh, the girl, Zoe. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I just, um, I think it's more the question this film asks is, is it sane to deny how you feel about somebody even though, though you're clearly in love with them? So I want to know, if I was a fly on the wall, let's say, I don't know, I was in London and you're at the Wolseley taking some girl out on a date. If I was a fly on the wall, because I'm sure that's where did you, you go. Did you, like, guess my favourite restaurant in London? Is that really your favourite restaurant? I actually really like that. <laughs> yeah. It's one of mine. <laughs> um, so let's say we're at the Wolseley, you're out on a date with a girl on the fly on the wall. What am I going to see? What kind of guy are oh, you like on a date? I just, like, try and, you know, talk and be interested. And I've been t I was told the other day by people that I'm, like, really, uh... I don't know what, what it's about. Like, I used to love being in like, I spent a lot of time in the hair and makeup rooms as, as a kid, uh, which is kind of like having a lot of older sisters. So I'm very okay with like being in the middle of a group of women talking about like girl stuff. And I feel like I can cuss, you know, jump in with things. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I just, you know, I just try and make them laugh. That's, yeah, that's always been my recourse. Is it, is it, is it harder for you to date because of all the stuff around your life? Like, is it hard to find people that want to know you and not the kid from the movies? I don't think so. I mean, I think because I've grown up with it for so long, you've got a pretty good radar for when people are sincere and when they just, you know, want you for something else. Um, and, you know, I, yeah, so I, I like to think I would pick up on that. Um, but, so it hasn't made it that hard. I mean, it makes some things harder, but not dating has always been, and often, if I'm honest, like, I've, I've met almost all of my girlfriends through work in some way. So it's sort of, it, I guess that's how I meet people, yeah. Obviously, you know, I have to ask the perennial life after Potter question. Um, you know, obviously when you first started, you were so young, so I probably you, you couldn't probably appreciate the magnitude of what yeah, that was. Totally. So when you look back on it now and choose, you know, different like kind of nuanced roles like this, do you realize what a big gargantuan thing it was? Yeah, I mean, I think also now, you know, seeing when you're in the middle of a franchise and it's all you do all the time, it's uh, it kind of you can't you can't see the wood for the trees and now like seeing other franchises and, and franchises and how huge they are you kind of go God we that was us if not more like you know that was uh, so it, so it definitely gives you some perspective on that and also just on what I took away from that series in terms of what I learned I, I could never. It's interesting because I would I have a set of instincts that are just inbuilt now about how to be on a film set that I don't even think of as being even remotely things anyone would have to learn. But then you see people come onto film sets for the first time and they do have to learn that stuff. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, I definitely I and also stamina like those films shot for eleven months at a time and I thought that was normal. So it's you know that that definitely sets you up for for the future. So Wallace, we should talk about the complex issues of our time. Can men and women really be friends, or do you secretly want to bang Chantry? She has a boyfriend. I don't really know how to Ben Wallace is here. Hi, thanks for coming by. Are you trying to sleep with my girlfriend? No, God, I wouldn't. Don't worry, we're just we're just talking, guy. Okay. <laughs> You can't interact with a woman without sex screwing it up, but I can because I'm a grown-up. And it's so adorable that you really believe that. Ben? Oh my god! Ben? Are you okay? I'm sorry! You look fine!
So is you being naked all the time in film and on stage your rebellion towards Harry Potter? <laughs> no, not particularly. Like, I think the first time I got naked was in Harry Potter. Um, there was like, there was that scene in number four, which I was like, really weirdly young. Um, and then, um, and then like after that, there was like, I'm sure there was some other, at least half naked stuff. Um, yeah, it's been a theme of my entire career. And it's, it, I could never have predicted that when I was 10, you know? Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I, somebody said to me the other day, was like, do you request it? And I was like, no, I don't request it. I just don't say no. And I've, I've been on set for those situations where actors suddenly get on set and they're like, no, no, I don't want to do this actually, or they want to change it somehow. And it's like, you read the script. Come on, man, you know what you, you know this is gonna happen. So yeah, I just, I guess I like to be unfussy about that stuff. No body double. No body double, no, not, not ever, yeah. Well, once you've done it on stage, you see, it's sort of you lose inhibitions. Uh, I want to know about Frankenstein. What can you know about Frankenstein and playing Igor, such an mm. iconic yeah. role? Um, stepping into those shoes. Yeah, I mean, it was it was painful. Like my back is 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 just about getting back to uh, sort of where it should be now. Um, but yeah, it's you know it's a really crazy movie. It's going to be everyone sort of thinks they know what it is, and nobody actually does. It's um, it's a complete retelling of the story. It's part based on the book, part based on movies, part based on the bloody Monster Mash song. Like, it's, it takes from everywhere. It's sort of a Frankenstein of Frankenstein. And it's, um, and yeah, it is, uh, I play Igor, and yeah, I mean, there, there's so much to go into that I really, I, I don't wanna spend all my time talking about Frankenstein because I'm gonna do a whole other press tour for that. But yeah, I'm excited about it. What's the voice? The voice is like, is the same as mine, except just slightly less posh. Uh, slightly less posh English, like a little rougher, but not like, there's not like a real voice. It's more, the posture is more what's gonna, I think, that was the bold decision I made was with the, was with the physicality. Question for you, I just thought of this. What advice would you give to your younger self, knowing what you know now, in terms of the business, in terms of growing up? Um, I would probably say like, don't worry about all the people who, when you're 18, start asking you questions like, is your life over? Because, um, or when you're 20, because it, like, have you peaked at this moment? And because, you know, you're right, you will work harder than they think you will, and you will make it out the other side. That's what I say. What about independent film do you love so much? Because I know you've, you've done a lot of smaller movies recently. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, that's where the best scripts are. I think often in the studio system, it's a question of having to get 20 people to agree on one thing. And when it's when, 20, when it's 20 people's version of something, it's always gonna become slightly um, homogenized and diluted. So it's, um, I think the, the boldest ideas that I have found so far have been in the, because uh, unless you have somebody at the helm like Chris Nolan, who can just do what the hell he wants, you know, and just makes big, ambitious movies, um, you know, that that's, uh, it's, at the moment, I found it's where the best scripts are. Uh, but the trailers aren't as nice. You know what, they they are. They really are. They're like, no, there's not much of a difference. Like, the only felt like Killy Darlings, we didn't have trailers, and actually that was one of the best, because it meant that the actors all just hung out all the time and we got really close. Um, and, you know, the trailers on, I think like I've only ever once been in like a proper American film trailer. Like, because English trailers don't like quite compare to what you guys have over here. You guys have taken it up a notch. Final question, obviously the sandwich in this movie is very famous. Yeah. If Dan was gonna, if there was a sandwich to represent Dan, okay. what would you be as a sandwich and why? Um, I'd be like full of bacon, cause I really am. And um, what else? That It would just be composed of like lots of meat and cheese. Cause that's all I eat pretty much in various forms. You're English. Yeah. <laughs> So, this Wallace guy? We're friends. I already called dibs on him. Dahlia, you barely know him. Can I help you? I would like to try on that dress. It's a size two. I'm a two. Oh, oh. Wallace! Yes? I need you to come in here. What? I'm kind of stuck. Are your eyes closed? Yes. You okay? I'm not sure. I've been offered a job in Taiwan. I'll be gone soon. It's very easy to be cynical about love until you've had that instant connection. If you're lucky, it happens once in a lifetime. Yeah.